Comic Con was this past weekend and with it came a new trailer for Alien Rogue Incursion. My first reaction was, hey, this looks pretty good. My second was, oh no, because I knew what was coming and I wasn't wrong. If you're a detractor of this game, you likely fall into one of four categories and I have a rebuttal for each one. It's a live open daily podcast. Let's talk about it. I'm your host, Live Open Mike. The new trailer for Alien Rogue Incursion dropped this weekend and it introduced us to the lead character, a lady named Zula Hendricks. I'll cover the reaction to Zula specifically at the end of this podcast because frankly, that was the most vile stuff I've read all weekend. And I wanna give it a little space and a little trigger warning before we get there. So going through the four different types of reactions to the trailer and the game overall, I'm gonna lump the first two together because my rebuttal is the same for both. These are the people who number one, aren't happy that it is a virtual reality game. And number two, this one is more ridiculous that they're screaming for a sequel for Alien Isolation because that's what they wanted or a port of Alien Isolation to virtual reality. I've made a whole video about why I don't think ports of existing flat screen games really work in VR anymore. And by that, I don't mean that they're bad games, just that they're not bringing new people into VR because why are you going to ask someone to spend hundreds of dollars for a virtual reality headset or a game they can already comfortably play from their couch or their gaming chair? That's not something that's going to sell hardware. But beyond that, and this is where I think like the zealotry around Alien Isolation is absolutely fascinating to me. But here's a cold hard reality of it. The game did not sell very well. Alien Isolation sold 2.1 million copies in its first year of release. If you're a completely independent studio, that's perfectly fine for you. If you're a VR studio, you'll be doing backflips over that. If you are a big licensed IP and you're being published by Sega, those are not good numbers at all. In an earnings call in 2015, Sega said that their sales have been softer than they projected and the main crux of that was Alien Isolation had underperformed. Now this doesn't mean that the game itself was bad. A lot of people actually really love that game. It won a bunch of awards and things like that. But the fact remains that it did not sell well. And there's any number of different reasons why that happened. First of all, this game came out a year after Alien Colonial Marines dropped. And that game, uh, yeah, it didn't do so well. Critics ripped it apart, players ripped it apart. There was just a lot of ill will around the Alien franchise. And then along comes Alien Isolation, a survival horror game, not a high action game. And people probably looked at that and went, nah, I'm good. I'm not happy with the last thing you put out. Totally understandable. Over the years, that game has become a bit of a cult classic. Over the years, the game has become a bit of a cult classic. But to me, cult classic means that it did not sell well when it first released, and then people found it later and said, oh my lord, this is awesome. Everyone needs to play it or see it or whatever. Whether you're talking about the game, a movie, a TV show, whatever. But in this initial release window, you know, the time where people actually need to be paying attention to it, so as much people want to see Alien Isolation in VR, the fact is you're pretty much stuck with the VR mod because why would Sega go through the process of making a VR port of a game that did not sell well? Not to mention that the studio that made Alien Isolation Creative Assembly, well, all the developers who were working on that game at that time no longer work there. And in the 10 years since Isolation was first released, Creative Assembly has just made straight up turn-based strategy games in their Total War series. Then there are the people, and I put myself in this group, who were wary about it. One, because of the developer surveils. Their last action game was The Walking Dead Onslaught, which is um not my favorite game. We'll just say it like that. That one actually really suffered from the fact that a vastly superior game, Saints and Sinners, came out around the same time, but the game itself was played with a lot of problems. And then from some of the early comments from developers, it was given the impression that this game was going to be a roguelike, a genre that I think is vastly oversaturated in the VR, and I just kind of lost my enthusiasm for it, thinking it was going to be just a short-term gameplay loop. So my enthusiasm for the game went down looking at Survival's history and then all the rhetoric that was going around the internet. But you know what? That's my fault for trusting people on Reddit. Because in all the interviews that they did over the weekend, the art director, Tate Mosesian, said specifically that this was an 8 to 10 hour narrative campaign. On top of that, you also have to look at the game writer they brought in for the game itself. That's Alex White. Alex White has written two tie-in novels in the Aliens franchise. Their work is actually pretty well regarded. We're going to talk more about Alex White when we get to the last reaction. But in general, you're not bringing in someone who's got that kind of pedigree and that kind of background if you're making a very simple roguelike. So feel a lot better about that. We're getting the full story campaign. I'm sold. Let's go. And then there's the last one. And this is the reaction to the lead character of the game, Zula Hendricks. I instantly was like, oh, this is not going to be good. And out came all the racist people and the sexist people and all the misogyny. Thankfully, most of those comments were deleted from like the IGN video. I know Gamertag got a lot on his video and he deleted a lot of those as well. But some of the vile crap that was being spewed just really made me sad. And this happens all the time where you're talking about people of color in games. And God forbid you have a female in your lead role. You're absolutely going to have some sexist assholes jump out. Unless the character is hypersexualized, like in a lot of JRPGs or the gotcha games or something like the original Lara Croft with her triangle boobs. 
So when I started going through the reaction to the new trailer specifically from like Upload VR and IGN and, and other creators who already put videos out, again, a lot of these were deleted, but I do have a ton of screenshots sitting here in front of me. I'm not gonna read through every single one of these because I'd be here for an hour doing that and some of this stuff will turn your stomach. But frankly, this kind of prejudice and stupidity absolutely needs to be called out because the only way you see things get better is when dumbasses like these get called out and get shouted down by what hopefully becomes a more vocal majority. So one exchange here, this is me read tongue in cheek. African women make up the largest share of gamers worldwide. Africa is the richest, most technologically advanced society on earth. They invented every aspect of computers and virtual reality and spend more and play more video games than any other demographic. One of their responses pretending to be the developer said, quote, we really got to nail the alien vibe, the post-processing color grade, like the film, the sounds, the level design, the tension. Okay, for the player character, Leslie Jones. This person's response, Leslie Jones is so wildly repulsive. She certainly seems like an alien, but she is in fact just extremely African as most Africans are. Next post from the same person, black women aren't tough. They are wildly emotional and instinctual in every disastrous way. They seek out conflict, take offense at every word, yell and scream for no reason, have unprotected sex with criminals and have their babies while the father is in prison. Here's another one. This was posted in response to Servios' comment on X. This is the protagonist? Of all the characters in the Alien universe that have a VR game, you choose this? Color me shocked. Take a look at the guy spearheading the project. This in reference to TQ Jefferson. He's the chief product officer for Servios, and he was the first person out there doing interviews about the game. He did a sit down with IGN a couple of months ago before this new trailer came out. TQ Jefferson is black. And then there's this very poorly written comment on Gamertag's video. Why now it have to be black woman? No, just a woman, but need to be black. This is insane. I responded to this because Gamertag called it out and he was kind of shocked that this stuff happens in 2024. My response was, I wish I could say I was surprised, but having grown up a black gamer, this crap flares up more than people realize. These are just a few of the examples of stuff that was flying around. If you spent three seconds on Reddit, you'll find much, much more of it. And some of it is pretty disgusting, so I'm not gonna go into it. Because out came the anti-woke police, and this was a DEI project. That's diversity, equality, and inclusion, for those who don't know what that acronym stands for. And basically everyone's saying that this was some kind of affirmative action game. Never mind that Zula Hendrix is an actual canon character. She's in the tie-in novels in the Alien franchise. She's friends with Amanda Ripley, the star of Alien Isolation. And the entire Alien franchise was built around a strong female character. That's Ripley, played by Sigourney Weaver. I'm old enough to remember the absolute shock if you 100% at the first Metroid game and people were absolutely surprised to find out that Samus Aran was a female. Now Nintendo did of course objectify her because when she took her suit off, there she is in the bikini. But I have friends who refused to play the first Metroid game once they found out Samus was a female because they didn't want to play as a girl. Now Lara Croft in the original Tomb Raider games got a big pass because she has short swords and big polygonal triangular boobs. But when they rebooted that franchise a few years ago and some of that footage started coming out of a game that looked absolutely incredible, the first thing people commented on was, hey, why'd she get a boob job? Lara Croft is not flat. Screw this game. When the Resident Evil 4 remake was announced, there were people who were saying they refused to play the game if you could not look up Ashley's skirt like you could in the original. Even the most celebrated VR game of all time is not immune to this because when Half-Life Alex was announced and people found out you were playing as Alex Vance, a 19 year old black female, there are people who had garbage reactions to this too. Here's one from the Steam forums. I love Half-Life, but this is so stupid. This game is VR and I don't play myself in this game, WTF. How am I in the body of a female? This breaks the immersion and I don't get it. I love VR, but this is so bad and it's sad like my bad English and it goes on. I love to play females in any other game. Stop saying I hate to play women. It's only a problem in VR. Now, a lot of this went away when Alex came out because frankly, Half-Life Alex is really, really good. And that is not my worry about Alien Rogue Incursion. If this game is not good, if this game does not do well, that's gonna give that entire crowd ammo to say, you know what they should have done. They should have had the star white male character and then it would have done just fine. And of course, we all know that's stupid because the Alien franchise has been built around strong female characters like I already talked about. But if the narrative on the game is written before it ever comes out, then suddenly that game has a bigger uphill battle because now you're fighting for the hearts and minds of people who have basically written off the game for their own stupid, ignorant, prejudiced reasons. And even in VR, this isn't a rarity. There are multiple VR games where you play as a female character, but because it's not as high profile than big IP as Alien Rogue Incursion, out come the idiots. But there's Moss and Moss Book 2, Max Muster, Journey to the Foundation, Lies Beneath, Falcon Age, Asgard's Wrath 1 and 2, Down the Rabbit Hole in this upcoming sequel, Witch Blood, Pixel Rip 1987, 1995, and 1978, and Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sister, just to name a few. And circling back to Alex White, the writer of the game, there were some really, really horrible comments in the interview IGN did with Alex and Tate Mosesian. Those who don't know, Alex White came out as queer and is a member of the LGBTQIA community. For those who don't know, Alex White is queer and came out as a member of the LGBTQIA community. So on top of the racism and sexism, now you got transphobia and homophobia on top of that. 
just stupid. So if you're within the sound of my, so if you're within the sound of my voice and you're not in it, so if you, so if you're within the sound of my voice and you, so if you're within the sound of my, so if you're within the sound of my voice or you're watching this video and you see any of this crap going around the internet, do me a favor and say something because we can't let dumbasses like these become the vocal minority and write the narrative of this game before it ever comes out. Shout them down, arm yourself with the facts like the fact that Zula Hendrix again is a character in the novelization of the game so she exists within this world already. Go through the fact that there have been countless female leads in and out of VR and those games have been perfectly fine. Taking it out of VR if you look at like the Tomb Raider series, the Horizon series, Perfect Dark, there's been plenty of examples dating all the way back to Metroid of strong female characters leading games. If you're checking out the podcast and you're one of the people who who believes any of this prejudice bullshit, do me a favor, go to hell.